Today's video is brought to you by Swagbucks. Everyone is looking for a way to earn a little extra cash. With Swagbucks, you can earn while you watch videos, play games, take surveys, online shopping, even watching Netflix, along with incredible discounts at tons of retailers like Target, Starbucks, eBay, and so many more. I joined a few months ago and immediately started earning, mostly doing things I was already planning on doing. I love using Swagbucks to save while shopping on Amazon. If you click the link in the description below, you'll receive a $5 bonus when you take your first survey. Swagbucks, it's a fun and easy way to earn a little extra. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated man who brings the drinks, Michael! heavy metal sound that you hear is Mike Tyson about to make his way in, I believe. The sound is deafening here in the arena, so I won't try to yell over it. All I can say is the heavyweight champion is about to make his appearance in the ring. Everything that Tyson does is intimidating. There he is. He comes out. He doesn't wear a coat in. He's worked up a full sweat. I want to tell you, the electricity in this crowd is now, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, once and for all, let's get ready to rumble! My baby's about coming up right now. It's all over! Mike Tyson has won it! Makes almost no back throw! A dramatic first round knockout for Mike Tyson! Unbelievable strike! It came in the first round! Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like at this time to introduce to you uh, one of the finest running backs in the United States of America, and our number one pick, Barry Sanders. The man had a Heisman Trophy, though. He was only five foot eight. What would happen the first time he got hit for real? Of course, if anybody in Detroit was waiting for that hit, they're still waiting. Here's nobody ever squared up Barry Sanders. There's Barry Sanders still waiting to get his chance, and there's Dave Levy. Uh, this is a, his first time in a Detroit Lion uniform, also his first time in pads. No running back in history could have made something out of nothing more than Sanders did with the Detroit Lions. A $9 million contract plus, the highest paid Lion in history. Wearing number 20, Billy Sims's old number. He's coming up in funds. You'll hear the cheer. And you, everyone has imagined, what would it be like to be the best? And he was the best. Here's Sanders with his first carry. The Lions needed a franchise player, and Barry had that flash. Listen to him. There, there are some guys who, when you strip it all away, the offensive line, the team they're on, the coach, the scheme, you see everything else, you say, just who's the best you've seen with your own eyeball? And I think most people say Barry Sanders. Touchdown! And Sanders is in for his first touchdown. Barry was playing. He was at the top of his game, and he was the guy everyone was talking about. Touchdown, Barry Sanders. First of all, Barry Sanders, greatest running back ever. In I my, agree. In my eyes. Okay? Barry Sanders with the spin move. How it looks like Barry Sanders has ball bearings in his ankles. Barry is somebody that you just, you, you hope you tackle. You know, it's, it's not like you're going to go out and say, I'm going to put a good lick on him. You just hope you get him down. Goodbye. I've always put Barry in the class <laughs> by himself. It's Barry and then it's everyone else. Barry 
He's young for a running back, too. He came up when he was 20 years old. The things he do are just unbelievable. I've, I've been a fan of Barry even long before I was in the league. Well, when it's your turn to tackle Barry Sanders. Sanders still on his feet, and Sanders is gone. Barry Sanders was the absolute hardest out, period. <laughs> I mean, we, we played we played a game and everybody missed him on a single play. Look out, Sanders! In only his second full season of the NFL, number 20 has clearly established himself as both the most humble and most spectacular runner in the league. An especially approachable young man, Sanders treated the country to a sample of his skills. George, you've thrilled us, you've been great, you've inspired us, you've entertained us. But now, please, isn't it time to go back to the old fishing hole before you seriously get hurt? A few days after Michael Mora beat Evander Holyfield, I got a call from George. And I said, George, you can't kid me. You want to fight Michael Mora. And he said more than anything else in the world. When Michael Moore defeated Holyfield to become the new champion, George Foreman, at age 45, would get one final shot. I knew what Teddy told me, like, this is a, he's a big con. And I just look at him like, go get me a sandwich and sit down. Man, you're so fake. Featuring the clown king of the sport, the larger-than-life George Foreman. Well, there are a lot of skeptics out there who think that George now is more King Con than King Kong. But George hasn't earned this a championship shot as a fighter. He hasn't fought in a year and a half, and on that inauspicious occasion, he lost to Tommy Morrison. Uh, with, uh, with the fighter he's fighting, he's going to have to punch and punch and try to club him and just keep beating him, but I don't think that's going to happen. So you see no chance that George can win the fight? Very little. Very little. Foreman looked to become the oldest heavyweight champion in boxing history, but despite the optimism of the crowd, Few gave Foreman more than a puncher's chance. Middle-aged men don't knock out 25-year-old heavyweight champions. He would be the oldest to win the heavyweight title by a huge margin over Wolfhead, who was 37, when he beat Ezra Charles. I always thought if the George Foreman from the Rumble in the Jungle had the brain of the George Foreman who fought Michael Moore, yes, that's the greatest holding. fighter ever. Uh, Let's get ready to rumble! I'm the boss man in here. Take your hands to lunch. George, how are you going to find him? You haven't fought in a long time. He moves in there. He goes at a different angle. He's a southpaw. He, you know, he wouldn't stand still for Holyfield. Why would he stand still for you? And George said, you watch. Somewhere late in the fight, he's going to come stand in front. And in the press, the feeling was that Mike would be too sharp, too fast, too young. And Big George, too slow and too big and too old. This colossus of heavyweight boxing. A man with a foot in several decades. Good people over the last two or three months think this fight shouldn't take place. Think that George has proven himself in danger of real and serious injury. The shadow of Ali loomed large over the career and legacy of Foreman. The vibrations are against him, the planets are against him, but already he lost right. the first five rounds. Michael Moore will go back to Teddy Atlas. Big George will lumber back slightly slower. The hardest part of the fight is over. Now you know it's not make believe anymore. Teddy it's Atlas telling him our spawn partners were better. The hardest part of the fight is over. You know what he's made of. Our sparring partners were better. We're round eight. Foreman's trailing, losing, but not out of the fight. Get all you got, George. a fantastic short left cross from Moore, young footed and sent Foreman stumbling. George Foreman had never openly sought specific redemption for his demise against Ali and Zaire, but it's revealing that he chose to wear the same trunks on this night that he had worn in the jungle 20 years before. George Foreman in the shorts he wore that night in Zaire to rumble in the jungle when he lost his world heavyweight title. I told you, I told you, I'm the champion of the world. But he always saw the ghost of a Muhammad Ali, and everybody has felt all along that you're always chasing the ghost of Ali. Does this make you catch that ghost? I'm the greatest. You know how the
independent vendors in the ring with me. That's it! It's a short right hand! There is no way he's gonna knock from that! It happened! It happened! I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Chasing the ghost of Ali. Does this make you catch that ghost. Yeah, I've exercised a ghost once and forever. Twenty years after being beaten by Ali, Big George Foreman recaptured the heavyweight championship, the oldest champion in the history of boxing. Slam dunk championship, Michael Jordan, Dominique Wilkins. And just, you take this for granted now, but just the dunking. And just him being in the slam dunk contest, wearing his shoes. Everybody wanted those shoes. Everybody wanted to see the dunk. That's like all you cared about. Dominique versus Michael in the dunk contest was like Hagler, Hearns, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. From high above the rim. Well, now Jordan does have his first taste of pressure in the slam dunk competition. Michael said, oh, I got one bet. I'm going to kick my legs out. It's a heavyweight fight. This is what everybody was building up for. <laughs> I'm predicting a 50 on that. Be hard not to give a 50 on that one, Steve. That was impressive. They both got 50s on their first dunks. Could we call it a make good? I mean, that's a two-hand windmill with authority. Now for Michael Jordan. Here's the story. Wilkins finishes with 145. Michael Jordan needs a 48 to tie, a 49 to win. And Michael is backing all the way to the middle of the back. Michael, he understands the moment. He walked down. He took his time. 48 ties, a 49. tapes playing and I think that's kind of where I became a huge Bruce Lee fan if I want to punch I'm gonna do it man uh, he says be formless shapeless like water be formless shapeless like water he does things four or five times a game that you just say wait rewind that Water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Whoa, perfect timing. That gets in the end zone. Christian McCaffrey undresses a handful of Buccaneers for his second touchdown of the day. When they work in Big Bear, he says, I got to bring in all big guys to work with him, Roy. Because he doesn't feel threatened by anybody his size. Triple G trains at 7,000 feet above sea level. His relentless training sessions are a thing of legend in the fight world. The boogeyman of the sport right now. This guy is the most feared man in boxing. It's not enough to just have power. You gotta have more than that. You gotta put it all together. The lobster puts it together. He has the right approach. It's not enough to just have power. Ernie Shavers had great power. He never won a world title. He's not just a puncher. He knows how to punch. The technique and the mechanics is there. It's not just the power. It's the way he uses it. Give me another. Here, this level, Gennady. This level. <laughs> I'm not machine. First round. Boy, he's throwing a 
a jab that's landing like a right hand, but he's not off balance when he's throwing it. Pumping right hand, Golovkin. Pulverizing Ishida with his jab. He just keeps coming. Like some sort of Eastern Bloc Terminator. Hasta la vista. Baby. Thirteen knockouts in a row. His reign of terror continued. There was a, there was a lot of reasons why there people did not like Kobe when he played. He's heating up. How hot is Kobe? He's got ten, and he's four or five, making five or six. Kobe was now. kind of a go to bed early, wake up early. Blast off! Very micro focused career. I'm not saying it was perfect. Boom shakalaka! Even with a contact early. He had a really bad incident, and it. But he rebounded with another seven, eight, nine years after Kobe that. Kobe could have a double double by the end of quarter. That is his fifth. for the three-point play. Can get to the 50-point mark with three, 3.32 to go in the third. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. So I got to help you up in the limousine. And the pictures on my wall. And do the eighth wonder of the world? Tonight he is. Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. When I was getting broke, man, I could picture this. Hit the end screen, money green, leather sofa. Got two rides a limousine with the chauffeur. And if you don't know, you know. I'll score them by himself. 62 for Kobe and 61 for the Mavericks. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? In 2016, when Steve won, Nash won the back to back MVP, Kobe should have won the MVP. You're fighting for the first time in the history of boxing that two two-time gold medalists are getting in the ring. Lomachenko. He dodges punches like Neo dodges bullets. Fittingly, he's been nicknamed The Matrix. The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window. Next thing I know, I'm two or three rounds into it, and I'm going... He's playing with Brigandel. Yeah. Playing with him, I'm going home. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. But it's all set up by his feet. Look at his feet. Look at his feet. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. He is the Matrix with his angles. The other title holders were understandably less than enthusiastic about being dismantled in the Matrix. Undefeated world champion, and he's toying with him. He is the one. He is saying I don't want any more. Are you kidding me? The undefeated number seven pound for pound fighter is not coming out to continue against world. Another opponent. Quitting on his stool, submitting to the will of Lomachenko. Yeah, I'm giving a new name to Lomachenko. No Mas Chenko. Mm -hmm. There it is. That's the fight that really sold me on Lomachenko, that he's that good. A prodigal son returns and revitalizes an entire city with a few simple words, I'm coming home. When you make mistakes or you've done something that you didn't feel was the best choice to make, it's how you come back from adversity. It's how you come back from those pitfalls that define who you are as a man and as a, as a professional athlete. I think that he was, you know, he has a sense, I think, of completing circles and of his own story. And I think he believed that going back to Cleveland would complete a real circle in his career.
Well, I didn't like the, 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 the Miami switch okay. and the way it was handled. And I didn't like the coming back to Cleveland. Like, why does every time, every time he goes somewhere, there has to be, like, fireworks? I, I would be astounded if LeBron James even seriously entertained the notion of going back to Cleveland. In 2014, LeBron returned to Cleveland, vowing to bring a title to his hometown. On the internet, a lot of people discuss Jordan and LeBron. It's getting closer by the year. His play immediately returned the Cavs to prominence. It's King James! Oh my goodness, LeBron James! For James, wow! I can let the world know what I do all along. I've been chasing this guy in Chicago who's been retired for over a decade. A game seven, back in Oakland. Oracle Arena is alive and roaring as we get set for game seven. The finals, when he was down 3-1 to a 73-win team, the all-time winningest team. Now 3-3 three to three in the NBA Finals. Because of this historic run all season long, do you feel like there's a legacy on the line? Oh yeah, legacies on both sides, you know. No team in the history of the NBA had come back from a 3-1 deficit. This is the kind of moment that can be overwhelming. Pass right through the hands of Curry! James, by two-handed slam! Reed leading the break. Reed's pass stolen by James and Mo Williams all alone. Y'all must have forgot who I am. Yeah. Because he went at Steph Curry every chance he got. Left hand is blocked by James. Well, the Golden State Warriors will go to the locker room with a seven-point lead. Here comes Irving. Irving drives past Green. The foul. Every Batman needs a Robin. Oh, what a sweet move from Kyrie Irving. Cleveland fans haven't celebrated a championship in any major sport in 50 years. Curry to Livingston. Throws it down. And the game is tied. Timeout, Cavaliers. When Golden State goes on one of those runs, doing whatever it is that they do. Curry, crossover, three-pointer. It's good. It might be too much for this Cleveland Cavaliers, character-wise. The only triple doubles in the history of a game seven of the finals were from Jerry West and James Worthy until tonight. As LeBron James with 26, 10, and 11. At the moment of truth, LeBron James made the key defensive stop. Irving drives, hot step, inside, floats it up, misses. Rebound taken by Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala. Coming back from a 3-1 deficit, being the first team in NBA history to do it in an NBA Finals, winning back-to-back -back games at the Oracle. The comeback against the 73-win Warriors is the greatest in NBA history. When you do the impossible, and they did it. It's over! It's over! Cleveland is a city of champions once again! Believe in Cleveland! Savor it! Soak it in! The kid from Akron has come home. The Cavaliers are NBA champions. And the impossible dream has come true. Time to celebrate a title. The curse destroyed. 52 years of torment and anguish has been washed away. He can never play basketball again. He's one of the three greatest players ever. And LeBron James isn't finished. With a healthy Gronk, the Patriots were poised to make a run at their first Super Bowl title in 11 years. What a catch oh, by man. Gronkowski. Unbelievable. How the f*** did you catch that? Unbelievable. That was one of the best catch I've ever seen in my life. With Gronk, what he's better than me at is is the blocking. He's, he can block. 
He's a big old guy. Blocking is about uh, desire. It's hard. It hurts. It's not fun. <laughs> That's Khalil Mack. But he became an unbelievable force on the offensive line. Here, he blocks Von Miller while also drawing coverage from Tlaib. Drives him right off the field and into the television truck. And I think Gronk, you see him flapping his fingers saying, that guy's been talking all game. I just threw him into the NBC camera. Yes, he was just yapping to me the whole time, and uh, that's why I took him and threw him out of the club. Gronk had moments of stretches through his career where you just went. Like, it doesn't seem fair. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Information <laughs> point. He seemed like the Little League, the 12 year old Absolutely. in Little League. Like, right. It's like, that guy's 6'3. Why is he in the Little League World Series? He drove here. Gronkowski, 26 yards. Whoa, what a play. Then he had Trey for Belichick, tells him, I'm going to dance, coach, all right? I'm going to stick my tongue out and dance. There you go. Gronk dominated the postseason. The pass is caught by Gronkowski. Touchdown. Scoring in every game. This is just another wrinkle. They were ahead of the curve on. Third and one. Touchdown, Gronkowski. The match would lift Mayweather to levels of fame reached by very few fighters. Forbes magazine reported that you are the world's highest paid athlete. From dancing with the stars to mingling with Obama, Pretty Boy Floyd has become a household name. Right, tonight, what round was it? Round four. I think you saw more action in these four rounds than you've shown the value for money in Floyd's whole career. I'll just leave it at that. Two undefeated champions. The Hatton fight sold out in less than an hour. Let's get ready for Floyd Mayweather versus Ricky Hatton. The crowd was almost entirely pro Hatton. The rich, powerful, and famous all flocked to the event. A diverse and star studded celebrity group. Honey, do you think KFC's still open? My man. Wesley Snipes just on the other side of Denzel here. Brad Pitt and Angelina. The undefeated fighting pride of Manchester, England, Ricky Hitman. He was beating up popular good fighters, and he was unpopular with most people, actually. Pretty boy Floyd, a.k.a. Money Mayweather. But they paid to see him lose, and that was his stated strategy behind the scenes. And then later on, he admitted it. Floyd Mayweather's on a completely different planet. It was a clinic. Mayweather embarrassed half of KOing the undefeated fighter in the 10th round. Well, he's one of the great pure boxers who ever lived. He has never cheated himself. He always was in condition. He had no off nights. Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer in the world. Six-time world champion. Five different weight class, 20 championship fights. I, I fought the best from all over the world, from Delahoy to Ricky Hatton, and the list goes on and on. I have nothing else to prove. 21 months ago, Floyd Mayweather was considered the best fighter in boxing. Can he make us believe that is still the case tonight? Uh, my last fight with Marquez um, went 12 rounds. I had to shake off the cobwebs because, you know, I was retired for two years. Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard came back from layoffs successfully, and they did but they were never quite the same. The punching stats told a tale of utter domination. There's a knockdown on Olympic. Excellent left hook. 
Mayweather landed 59% of his punches. I haven't saw Marquez land maybe about two or three clean punches in the entire fight. Marquez landed only 12%. Shutting everything down. He just became this defensive wizard. You said earlier it's like two cobras squaring off. So far it's been more like a cobra and his prey. Serpents. Brilliant combination by Mayweather. Super. about the selection of Marquez as the opponent. It seems that... The thing is this, I'm gonna do the talk because you do too much talking. The thing is this. All right, no, 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 Jim. No, 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 let, me, let me do the talking then. Jim. Okay then. With Kobe, even when you're not talking NBA Finals, there are moments, 81 points jumps to mind, of the course. Raptors and the Lakers. Raptors been residing in the basement of the Atlantic for most of the year. The last thing we've talked about was 81 points you dropped on the Toronto Raptors. That'll be another tough shot. Kobe's putting up pretty good numbers, but he's not really going off. Kobe is back in and out of moment. Yes, and we were winning earlier in the game. So it gave us, I guess, some false security. We're down by 18, 20 points. And uh, we need some energy. All of the Lakers have to keep going up. They're giving him the ball to see if he can add to it. Then I want to say he erupted for like 40 or something in the third quarter. Kobe again! He was dominant over us. Knocked away by Kobe. Great hustle by Kobe. He's going to score. Talking to you? He didn't say a word. 62 for number eight. But obviously a lot of his game patterned after the great Michael Ford. Michael's high in the game, 69. When did you know that you were going for eight? Yes! <laughs> well, there's 70. Holy. Oh. 70 points for Kobe. One away from the Laker record. I just remember realizing at one point in the game, this may be something historic happening right now. I don't even know if I believe it. 77. We'll just let you soak it in with the crowd. This one would be the tie rope for number two, and the next one would be the pass. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed the second greatest scoring performance in NBA history. 79 points. I mean, you overcame like a 14 point deficit, came back and just, I mean, you basically demoralized them, which is what you like to do. And an 81 point game, 55 in the second half. You gotta get him out of the game. Somebody gotta stop. Kobe will be replaced and listen to this crowd for number eight, Kobe Bryant. Tommy the Hitman Hearns. And Tommy Hearns was murking mothers. Like a cobra, man. Just crap. Motor City Cobra. That's it, Tim. A huge right hand. Forward. The fight's over, Tim. A huge right hand by Thomas Hearns. And so the super fight between Hearns and Hagler was set. Confident Thomas Hearns would move up to the 160-pound weight class. The long-awaited showdown was set. Keep that belt by your bed, because uh, it'll be the last time you sit. Can't hear you. Pull a little baseball cap on war across the top. You knew, and I think Thomas Hearns knew that it was about war with with Hagler. A great fight. Some of the some of the greatest fights of all time, if not the greatest. Some people still argue the Hearns fight. By the mid 1980s, marvelous Marvin Hagler had taken on all comers. After 11 title defenses over five years, he stood alone. It was no secret each man had little love for the other. This fight was everything for both of their legacies. Two warriors of historic renown.
Well, it's been voted certainly the greatest round ever, that first round when they went at each other like alley cats. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands, good luck to both of you. Famous quote that again Goody Petronelli told us, he said that when he was in the corner, Hagler said to him, whatever happens tonight, don't stop this fight, I'm prepared to die in the ring. Round two now. Oh! The club, left hand by Hagler. Hearns decided to stand right in front of Hagler, and Hagler decided to stand right in front of Hearns. As you say though, Hagler turning it into a street fight. Well, he turns right. He wants it to be a street fight. Excuse me, Al. Hagler turns righty. I think this could be a key moment in this fight. For the first time. Hagler switching. Whoa. Whoa. Crazy, right? Oh, it was amazing. Marvin Hagler made you want to just get out of your house and go running in the snow. He has Hearns in trouble on the ropes. Tommy trying to punch his way off the ropes. Hagler wants to keep him there. Goes to the body. Second round coming to an end. Hagler bloody but very much unbound. End of round two. They said this fight would be determined on heart and the good chin. Right now, that's exactly what it's being determined on. You can throw the, you can throw the strategy out the window right now. Again, Hagler is all bloodied. Time is called by Richard Steele to send Hagler over to the ring doctor. He's calling the ring. Stand toe to toe and see who's the bigger man. Oh my God, everyone's gonna die. <laughs> He's gonna take you. Hagler's gonna take you to the end of the earth, man. But it was a beauty. Arguably the most action-packed three rounds of boxing in history. Dubbed by boxing fans as the war. You know, he was so disciplined. That was the thing that I always got out of watching him. It wasn't that he was so wild. He was so mentally strong. He had an iron chin. And his discipline was um, impeccable. Hagler had one more quick defense before stepping away for over a year. Nobody brings it home like Joe Vincent. Nobody. Make it so.